Hello everybody. Today we're going to actually find what is known as the molecular formula for a compound. As you know, the molecular formula is the exact formula that a, a chemical compound has. Before you had learned that the empirical formula was the simplest whole number ratio or the reduced form of the molecular formula. Now, in order for us to obtain a molecular formula, we are going to need two pieces of information. One, we're going to need the empirical formula. And the second is the actual mass of the compound that we're looking for. In other words, the molar mass of the compound. And we can basically do this in three steps. Okay? You'll notice, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in my own summarized way, that this is the key step over here. And I'm going to address that in a moment. So here is my way of showing you how to determine the molecular formula given the data that I just shared with you here. The first thing you need is to determine the empirical formula. So let me write that down here. Now, Sometimes this step is done for you. They already give you the empirical formula, which is great because you can go straight into the second step. Sometimes you have to find the empirical formula and they would have to give you the data. Now we learned earlier how to find the empirical formula. So if you have to do step one from scratch, you have to, again, if they give you the information in grams, you got to change it to moles divide by the lowest number of moles and hopefully if you get all whole numbers that's the empirical formula if you have a decimal you have to do an adjustment for example if something ends in 0.5 you got to multiply by 2 to get a whole number so the data again can either be given in grams or percentages and you might have to find the empirical formula from scratch or sometimes you get lucky and they already give you the empirical formula, which means we can go straight to step number two. Now, here's step number two. You saw it earlier here at the bottom. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and write this down. <clears throat> step number two is they're going to give you another piece of information. They're going to tell you what the molar mass of the actual compound is. Sometimes it's called the molecular weight or molecular mass, molar mass, all different names for the same thing. And what you're going to do is this will be given in the question. Once you find the empirical formula, this is the importance for step one. In step two, you're going to get the molar mass and you're going to divide it by what is called the empirical mass. The empirical mass is basically the molar mass of the empirical formula. That's why you need the empirical formula in step one. <clears throat> now, once you do, do this division, you're going to get what is called a ratio. We're going to use the letter N to symbolize the ratio. <clears throat> so this number that you get in step two is very important because once you get that number, and by the way, it's going to be a whole number always. What you're going to do is that you're going to use the, uh, the ratio from part two, which is the, symbolized by the letter N. Use the ratio, and you're going to distribute the, uh, the ratio... Distribute the ratio to the empirical formula to obtain the molecular formula. And this is the last step. So the ratio that you get in part two, you're going to use that, you're going to distribute that ratio to the empirical formula to obtain the molecular formula, which is the answer, okay? Now, I have two sample problems for you. In the first one, we're going to do the easier one, where step number one is already done for you, okay? 
Here's sample number one. <clears throat> Naphthalene is a compound and it contains carbon hydrogen used in mothballs. And they already gave you the empirical formula. So step one <clears throat> is done for you. We're going to go straight to step number two. Step number two is to find the ratio. Notice they give you the molar mass. They're asking you for the molecular formula. Okay? So, to find, to do step two, what you got to do is you got to get the molar mass, which is given. The molar mass is 128.16 grams per mole. And we're going to divide it by the empirical mass. Now, we don't have this number yet. <clears throat> we are going to find that number because the empirical mass is literally the molar mass of the empirical formula that we have here. So, on the side here, let's find the molar mass of C5H4. So, you got two elements, carbon and hydrogen. You got five carbons. <clears throat> From the periodic table, carbon is 12.01. And you got four hydrogens. And from the periodic table, hydrogen is 1.01. .01. And what we're going to do here, let's do a little math. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and um, multiply here. You get 60.05. You get 4.04 .04 here. You add that up. And the molar or the empirical mass is 64.09 <clears throat> grams per mole. So here's what you do. You're going to put that there. This goes on the denominator. Now, when you find the ratio, there are no units. They cancel. 128.16 divided by 64.04 gives you the value of the ratio or the letter N. It happens to be a 2. Now, look what we do to finish the problem. <clears throat> Step 3 says, distribute the ratio to the empirical formula. So, here's the empirical formula. We are going to distribute this ratio which means you're going to distribute through multiplication. So we're going to multiply the empirical formula by this ratio 2. So 2 times 5 gives you 10. 2 times 4 gives you 8. And after you distribute, you get the actual formula or molecular formula of this compound, which is C10H8. If you have time and you want to check your answer, you can always find the molar mass of the molecular formula and I promise you it's going to be right there at 128.16. I believe it comes out to 128.18 but that's close enough. That's due to rounding. So a way to check it is if you find the molar mass it will be given, it will be equal to the given from the question. Okay? Now <clears throat> notice in this problem step one was done. I gave you the empirical formula already. Now let's take a look at a problem where we got to do everything from scratch. <clears throat> Before we go into that, and I apologize for not saying this earlier, this one's actually worked out here. Okay, as you can see, here is step two. Okay, and on the next page here, you can see that they find the empirical mass right here, which we did the same. Here is step two being done. There's the ratio. Notice how they distribute the ratio to the empirical formula to obtain the molecular formula. <clears throat> so that's a little summary there. Okay, so moving forward, let's go over to the problem that I mentioned. This time, <clears throat> we don't have the empirical formula, but we have the data to find it. If you recall from previous to find empirical formula, this one's in percentages. So one of the things I told you to do is get rid of the percent sign. Assume the sample is based on 100 grams because percentages do add up to 100%. And 39.97% of 100 grams would be 39.97 grams. And this would be your carbon. For hydrogen, we have 13.41 and that again would be grams. And then nitrogen, we got 46.62 grams. So, 
Now that our data is in grams, <clears throat> step one is change to moles. So we got to divide by the atomic mass of carbon. This is 12.01. We're going to change everybody to moles. When you do this, you get 3.2. I'm sorry, 3.32. Let me fix that. 3.328 moles. We're going to divide this by 1.01, that's the atomic mass of hydrogen, and you get 13.277 moles. And then this one we're dividing by 14.01, again that's the atomic mass of nitrogen, and you get 3.328 moles. Once you convert everyone to moles, you want to divide by the lowest. Now notice that the first and the third number happen to be the lowest, they're the same. So we're going to divide all three numbers by 3.328. Let me fix that. Okay, like that. Whoops, divide here by 3.328. And <clears throat> these two are going to give you a 1. This one gives me a 3.99, which we can basically say 4. <clears throat> now the good news here is I don't have to do the additional step, I already have my empirical formula. I got one carbon, four hydrogens, one nitrogen. Remember, we don't have to put ones. And I am done with step one. I got the empirical formula. Okay? Now that I have the empirical formula, let's use this information because what they want is the molecular formula. Notice they gave us the molar mass. That's important. They have to give you the molar mass when you're being asked to find <clears throat> molecular formula. So let's go to the next page here. All right, so we got our empirical formula. It was CH4N. We also were given the molar mass and that was 60.10 <clears throat> grams per mole. If you recall, the next step is to get the molar mass and to divide it by the empirical mass. When we do this, <clears throat> we're going to get a ratio. Okay? We need to find the molar mass of this guy. So let's do that here. There's one of these, four H's, one nitrogen. Let's multiply by their respective atomic masses. That again comes from the periodic table. And let's see what our numbers come out to. So this is just 12.01. This is 4.04, 14.01. Then when we add, we get 30.06. That would be our empirical mass. That will go here. So <clears throat> we have the numerator and we have the denominator. So the numerator is the molar mass of the compound given in the question. We're going to divide by the empirical mass, which we just found. Remember when we do this, it's a unitless number. You're going to get the ratio. It happens to be two, coincidentally, like the previous problem. It, it could be a two, a three, a four. If it's a one, I would like to point this out. If you get a one, all that means is that the empirical and the molecular formula are the same. And you might have a situation where you get a 1. So just realize you did nothing wrong. All it means is that the empirical and the molecular formula are the same. So we are ready to finish this problem. Now that I got a 2 here, the last step says to distribute okay, the ratio, which is a 2. We're going to distribute that to the empirical formula, CH4N. And we distribute through multiplication. And when you do this, you end up getting two carbons, eight hydrogens, and two nitrogens. That is the molecular formula. Again, you can check this because if you get the molar mass of C2H8N2, it's going to be right about 60.10. In fact, I believe it's 60.12, okay, which confirms that this is the answer. Okay, so again, one way to check if you have time is find the molar mass of the molecular formula and it should be very close to that number. If not, it will be identical to that number. Okay, so this is how you find molecular mass or molecular, I'm sorry, molecular formula.